Welcome back to Safa Center for Archery Training's video training series. This video is designed to help coaches optimize their communication with athletes. When coaches communicate effectively, it maximizes motor learning outcomes and time is used more efficiently. Today we examine nonlinear pedagogy, NLP, as it can be applied to teaching the step of setup to beginning, uh, beginning archers in recurve archery. I've made several other recent videos that are on my YouTube channel on the step of setup, uh, but they cover setup from a technical standpoint or for, and are for more advanced athletes and coaches. So this particular video shows how I teach setup to beginners. I'll use a video of NLP in action with a group of 14 beginner adult archers to help provide you with examples for how I apply nonlinear pedagogy to my coaching. In addition, the video happens to also include an abundance of external and analogous cues that will assist in motor learning. For more information on this topic, check out the paper I wrote on this subject at the www.coachkylebissell.com blog. First of all, some of you might be wondering, what does pedagogy mean? Pedagogy is a fancy word that refers, that refers to how we teach. The word nonlinear is a little bit more straightforward. It means not in a straight line. Therefore, nonlinear pedagogy means teaching in a way where the learner is not given a specific roadmap to desired outcome or, learner, or learned content. So with nonlinear pedagogy, students are made aware of the desired outcomes and then have to figure out how to achieve those, dire, uh, those desired outcomes with guidance. So in athletics, this looks like coaches communicating the ideal final position of a movement pattern and then allowing time to explore, discover, and adapt their own functional movement solutions. Any verbal description in, in NLP has to stay clear and it also has to stay simple. It really should try not to contain any prescriptions for how to achieve the desired positions. Using setup as an example uh, with nonlinear pedagogy, the coach would only communicate the desired goal of setup. Okay, so raise the bow, achieve skeletal alignment, also known as barrel of the gun. A constraint would be added to help guide the athlete in the right direction. And I'll get more into what constraints are later and I have a great example of one. Then athletes are given time to explore, discover, and adapt ways on how to achieve skeletal alignment in the context of the constraints that are given. So at no point will there be talk about scapular depression towards the spine, back tension increasing to 60% while front tension decreases to 40, rotation of the torso around the spine, hips remaining stable, direction of the arrow uh, where it's pointed in relation to the target and so on. Uh, there'll be no talk of that. No talk of the how, it's just a quick description, a quick simple description of what is trying to be achieved in the final position, and then athletes are given an opportunity to explore, discover, and adapt with guidance. Some benefits of nonlinear pedagogy include the fact that the method indirectly communicates to athletes that there is more than one way to accomplish a task. Now, when athletes realize there's more than one way to accomplish a task, they, uh, it, it primes them, it primes the learner for taking risks, for being vulnerable and stepping into their growth zone. And that growth zone is really where optimal learning takes place. For example, in archery, there are multiple ways to achieve barrel of the gun by the end of setup. Athletes can coil up, they can coil down, they could even create a hybrid of those two uh, where they're coiling while they're coiling up and then they complete the coiling while they come back down. With NLP, athletes can explore their own functional movement pattern on their way to achieving barrel of the gun. In other words, they don't even need to know about coil up, coil down, or hybrids. Uh, they don't even need to know about the rotation. You just give them what the desired finished outcome needs to look like and they're gonna problem solve from there, organize their own movement patterns with guidance. Linear pedagogy, on the other hand, 
That's where coaches prescribe specific movement patterns that must be used to achieve uh, a specific end position. Linear pedagogy therefore indirectly communicates that there's only one correct movement pattern um, that must be used to achieve this one correct position. While there may be times where this linear approach is appropriate, nonlinear allows for learner autonomy and gives space for exploration and discovery. This exploration and discovery leads to higher le levels of skill retention. Athletes who have greater confidence in their abilities and athletes who can adapt more easily to their environment and their equipment. Let's check out this feature video with NLP, as well as a host of analogous cues used with a group of beginning adult recurve archers. Two goals for setup. The first one is raising the bow, and the other one is going to be aligning your skeleton. And your skeleton will be represented by these three dots that we just put on right now. Your bow side wrist, that's the hand that's gonna be holding the bow, your bow side shoulder, and then your draw side shoulder. Okay, everyone has tape on the correct body parts? Okay, great. So there's two goals to set up. Raising the bow and lining up those three dots. What are the two goals of setup? Raising the bow and lining up the two dots. All right, nice job. So let's just cover raising the bow. Everyone stand on your paw pads. And I want you to drop your stretch band for a moment. And we're going to imagine that you're Iron Man with those thrusters coming out of your palm of your hand and drive both hands down towards the ground and feel the energy, feel the rocket thrusters pouring out there. All right, feel that? And now drive those thrusters down and out and raise up both arms and feel that energy driving out, okay? Your shoulders should be nice and low now, I like that. And your arms should be energized, feeling really strong. Like I could come by and grab on here, and it's gonna be hard to pull down. Good job. Okay, relax, shake it out. And here we go again. Rocket thrusters. And raise yourself up. Nice, feel that energy the whole time. Iron Man is an analogous cue that helps athletes at all levels energize their bow arm starting in set position. I find the Iron Man cue really gets people outside their bodies and allows them to feel the power of their bow arm and also find their lats and engage in their lats, which is an important muscle on the bow side uh, throughout the shot process. I do not mention the lats, however, when teaching beginners. So using the lats as a, as a cue is an internal cue and internal cues have been proven by research to be less effective uh, in helping people develop motor skills. In addition, some people don't know how to, how to fire their lats. And so that's going to leave them feeling inadequate. If you're asking them to fire a muscle that they really have no idea, um, A is on their body and B how to fire it. So I stick with analogous or external cues. Let's do the raising of the bow on the draw side. So I want you to imagine a, a windshield right in front of you and your arm is a windshield wiper, but not this type of windshield wiper. It actually goes up and down like this, okay? So notice how my hand, my arm, excuse me, stays level with the ground as I do that. And if I could put a teacup right here on my elbow, that teacup would not fall off, okay? The teacup cue assures athletes keep optimal elevation of the draw side elbow. Other if they side? raise the elbow up too high or drop yeah, the elbow, yeah, the tea yeah, spills. Good. Everyone's doing it on the right side. There we go. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, watch my bicep. That's this muscle here in relation to my chest. Reach it over your chest and now do it. Okay, you just heard me talking about the bicep reaching across the chest. I actually prefer to use a different cue, the popcorn cue. Imagine you're sitting in a movie theater with your friend. Your, you, uh, your friend has popcorn in their seat over here. So the popcorn's down here reach across your body into their seat and get a handful of popcorn. Popcorn is the cue. The result of the popcorn cue is that the draw side bicep reaches across the chest and an optimal set position is achieved. Without this cue, in my experience, new archers want to immediately begin drawing the bow or uh, drawing the stretch band, sometimes even past their midline, uh, because that's what their me mental representation is telling them should be happening at this point in the shot cycle. 
and raise up, keeping the shoulder down. Nice job. Come up to about lip level. Come up to about lip level, and then back down, and lip level, and back down. Good. Put them both together. You have Iron Man and windshield wiper. I want you to feel, imagine like you're a little robot doing a dance, okay? <laughs> Good, let me see it. Do, every, do it 10 times each. Let me see. Yeah. All right, let's see it. Good. Good. Okay. Next. Uh, I forgot to give you one piece of tape, but we're going to imagine that it's there, okay? I'm going to give you a piece of tape. Everyone raise your bow arm. Raise it up. Good. Now take your other hand and imagine it has a piece of tape on it. And I want you to put it right here in like the pocket of your shoulder, right above your chest. Yeah. That is going to be a barcode. Everyone understand barcode? A barcode, like in the grocery store, when you take food and you scan it and it goes beep beep, beep beep, beep beep, beep right? So a barcode right here, and this is your scanner. So you have a barcode and your scanner and you go beep beep, beep beep, beep. understand? Okay, so as I come up, beep beep, beep beep. Okay, so this hand needs to be right in front of your barcode, beep beep. If I'm back here, if this hand is back here, is my scanner gonna go off? No, it's not gonna go off. If my arm is way up here, if my scanner's up here, do I have a barcode up here? No, it's not gonna go off. So when I come up, I have to hit that barcode. Beep, beep. All right, so go ahead and make sure you're hitting your barcode. Yes, good. Much better, much better, very good. Yes, that's it. Not only is barcode a helpful analogous cue for teaching setup, but it's also, you'll see me use it as a constraint here in helping guide athletes towards the desired position of barrel the gun. One downside of this cue is that new athletes can uh, begin bringing their hook right in close to the barcode, bringing their hook too close in towards their to torso. The consequence of this is that they lose that wonderful alignment you helped them establish in set position where the draw side elbow was inside or in line with the arrow line. I find a quick clarification for those who need it solves the problem. Fantastic. Everyone zoom in, come in maybe two or three steps, and I'm gonna kneel down and I'm going to present you with a challenge. Remember I said setup has two goals. What were those two goals? Raise the bow. Raise the bow and? and uh, get these three dots bad. into alignment, right? Get those three dots into alignment. We call that skeletal alignment. So you can see now I'm in set position. Are these three dots in a, sing in a straight line? No, 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 they're not. Okay, but what? As I raise up, are they in a straight line now? Yeah. Okay, so watch again. Are they in a straight line? Good. And where is this hand, my hook, my streamlined turtle, in relation to my barcode? Which one? Right it's right in front of it. So I'm still scanning that barcode. So it's beep, 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 beep. All right? Rather than, uh, excuse me, so here's another good example. Beep, 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 beep. I'm still scanning it versus, you see the difference? Now I'm nowhere near the barcode back here, okay? So I want you to problem solve how to find these three dots in a line. How do you, excuse me, that didn't come out well. I want you to problem solve how are you going to align these three dots. And then the, the, the only assessment that I want you to use besides are they in a line is, is, the, is your hook hand still scanning your barcode? Okay, let's try that. Align the dots. Here we have our centerpiece, the primary example of uh, NLP used to teach the more dynamic and challenging part of setup, opposed to just raising of the bow. That is the aligning of the shoulders with the bow side wrist to form barrel of the gun. A little bit more, okay? That looks good. So where's your barcode? Barcode's right here. So you want this hand to be there, good. 
Good. All right. Nice. Go up again. And then I want you just a little bit more. Get into a little bit more of a line. So just a little bit more. Oh, look at that. All right, do it again. Okay. I like it. Oh. There's strong evidence that the lack of physical activity associated with modern society is having a negative impact on physical literacy. There's also evidence that NLP allows people the space and time to play and explore with movement patterns. Here's an example of a new archer remaining in a static position and not exploring the range of motion that I would like to see them have at this point in time. 10 of these 14 archers did not speak English as their first language. So there may actually be a communication breakdown here between coach and athlete. Regardless, I intuited in this case that the athlete would benefit from more of a linear approach and move the athlete through the range of motion to the desired position. And you can see the impact was immediate and she performed a solid approximation of the movement pattern on the next repetition. Here's a quick summary, nonlinear pedagogy Pedagogy is a method to, of teaching where students are made aware of the desired outcomes and then have to figure out how to achieve those outcomes. In athletics, coaches communicate the final position and demonstrate that and then allow time for athletes to explore, discover, and adapt their own functional movement solutions. We saw a clear example of NLP at work when I got down on my knees and showed the group what the desired outcome was, skeletal alignment, barrel of the gun, when all three, three blue stickers on my body were in alignment. Athletes then had time to explore, discover, and adapt on their own with continued guidance. In addition to nonlinear pedagogy, this video happened to have an abundance of analogous cue examples for beginning archers. They include Iron Man, windshield wipers, teacup, popcorn, streamlined turtle, and align the dots. I hope you learned something, and more importantly, I hope your athletes do too. Until next time, keep it simple, keep it deep, and keep those motors learning.